Hello, Keith Rugg here at VengeMachinery.org. Well guys, we're back to working on the 16 inch Monarch, I'm very happy to say. And uh, today we're gonna be trying to finish getting this saddle uh, finished scraped in. So just to kind of bring you up to speed of where we're at, I've already pretty well got the, the cross slide up here scraped in. We've done some rough scraping on the bottom. Everything is pretty, fairly well in alignment, but right now there's a little bit of a twist to this whole thing and we're gonna be straightening that out. Let me bring you in here and show you exactly what's going on. So previously with this saddle, um, we basically came in here uh, quite some time ago, back during my past scraping class, and the, the ways up under the bottom, we set this, machine, this up on the milling machine and I actually recut uh, the ways, we took some material out, and we relined this with turkite. Turkite is a material that's made for putting on ways. It's kind of an additive material uh, that actually holds up very well uh, to wear and so forth. But it's, it's kind of a Teflon, it's embedded with some like some bronze type of a material uh, that we put in there on those ways. And now we've got to basically get that turkite scraped in. It's a little bit different than scraping cast iron. It's a little bit softer. It's actually a little bit easier to do. But the main goal that I want to get done here on, on this is, is, is to get this saddle where it is running parallel with the ways. Right now, uh, we're going to come in here and we'll actually do some testing off of the, the squareness here, come up, going side to side. Like I said, this surface is already scraped and it's already flat, everything's good there. But I wanna make sure that this is perpendicular to the actual travel of the ways. And I know already that it's, it's cockeyed one way, just a little bit, not very much. Uh, and we'll have to come back here and remeasure it. I don't remember what the number is, uh, but we're gonna have to actually take a little bit more off of one side and off the other and get this thing properly aligned and then also get the proper contact on the front and the back of this. And once that is done, the saddle should pretty well be finished and we can start scraping in the cross slide. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, we're just getting started on the day. And I'm gonna have a shop visitor here today actually helping me do this. Lance Baltzy, who is uh, one of the guys that's taken our scraping class, Richard King scraping class several times now, uh, lives not too far from me down in Gainesville, Florida. And he's actually on the way up right now. And uh, we're gonna have some, some fun time in the shop together working on this project today. So you'll probably be seeing Lance uh, helping me out on this quite a bit in a little bit. Lance has already actually gone through this whole process on 10 E that he restored. And uh, he's been kind of giving me a little bit of advice along and along. Uh, I, I know the process of the scraping, but he's kind of already been there on a lot of this stuff, already gone through it and figured a lot of this stuff out on his own. So uh, I'm really kind of counting on him to help me uh, get this job done today. So anyway. We'll be back in a little bit and get started on getting this uh, saddle uh, properly scraped in. So kind of bring you up to speed where we're at. This is uh, how we're setting things up to kind of see what's going on. And again, what we're really trying to do right now is I'm trying to make these dovetails, these ways here that the, that the cross slide's gonna go back and forth on. We wanna make those pretty much perfectly perpendicular to the ways in the lathe. Uh, that's the whole goal here. We've already got these scraped in, they're scraped in, they're flat, they're parallel, they're the same height, all that. So now we're working on the alignment of the actual uh, saddle itself to get things in and out. And to do that, we need to be able to measure things. So uh, we've got a uh, granite angle plate up here. This is a very high precision um, granite piece of granite. And basically we, we start by getting the granite lined up perfectly parallel to the, the ways. And the way we do that is with a, 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 a test indicator here. And we just slide the carriage back and forth. I don't wanna move it right now because my indicator's set. But we slide this back and forth until we get a zero reading on this. And we just kind of bump the plate around until we get it nice and square. And once we do that, we come in here and using this little rig here, which is a Kingway tool uh, invented by Richard King's father. We come in and we sweep down through here on this face and check and see how square things were. Now we've are actually already made a couple of rounds on this, doing some rough work. When we started out, it was about six or seven thousandths of an inch um, tilting in. So the backside was tilting toward the headstock by about six or seven thousandths. We've uh, already come in here and kind of removed some high spots and what have you fairly quickly, surprisingly quickly, and we're down to about 2,000s. 
But I wanted to kind of show you the setup here and I think this hopefully will kind of give you a better idea of exactly what we're trying to accomplish today by getting this alignment. At the end of the day, I, I actually don't want to be, have this 100% square. We actually want it to come in on this side up here by about a half a thou or so. I think the book says for a lathe this size is six or seven ten, ten thousandths of an inch. And that's just so that when you face something off, uh, you're, you're actually making a little bit, little bit of a concave cut so you don't have it coming out the other direction. And two, as the machine wears, uh, it's eventually gonna go to zero and then probably past zero at some point in time over a long period of time. But anyway, that's where we're at. We're gonna go ahead and pull the saddle off now and get it set up over here and do some scraping. I'll show you what it's, it's looking like. So this is what the bottom is looking like right now. And uh, again, we're, we're primarily focusing, this is the really the whole way that's doing the alignment. This back one is just sitting flat on the, on the surface. So there's really not a whole lot of alignment going on here. But we've actually started bluing up the ways and started looking at the contact in here. And like I said, we're about two, two thousandths roughly out of alignment right now. And while we don't have a whole lot of contact, it's really encouraging that we pretty much got contact in places all the way down through here and should clean up pretty good. Now, one thing we are working on is down this flat side, we were getting more contact tacked up there than over here. So right now we're trying to bring that side down a little bit. We're starting to pick up a little bit of contact in here, but uh, it's slowly coming in. But this is the turkite material. This is that uh, liner material that we put in here when of course, if you watch the whole series on this, I machined out a lot of the old metal. And this turkite, I think was 32 thousandths, I think is what it is, 32 yeah. or 37, I can't remember, thick. And um, right now we're, we're actually scraping that out. And uh, I tell you what, let's do some scraping. You wanna try it, Lance? I'll, I'll let, Lance is helping me today, so we'll put him in here. So Lance is in here and he's kind of using a draw scraping technique. So tell him a little bit about what you're doing there, Lance. And we're strategically scraping right now to get uh, both uh, more contact as well as taking this uh, particular dovetail surface down so we can get a little bit of rotation. And so I'm just pulling this carbide scraper across the turkite at an angle that'll peel off. I guess we estimated what, half a thou it's probably. about a half a stroke. thou, yeah. And then we're doing a checkerboard pattern. So we're doing 45 degrees alternating so that we get a nice even um, reduction in thickness of this turkite. There you go. And you know, normally when you're scraping, you're, you're pushing, uh, but because of the geometry of the cutter and, and this material, you could do a push stroke, but you'd actually have to regrind the, uh, the cutter to get the right angle on there. But you can do this pull stroke with your same uh, cutter angle as you do for regular cast iron scraping, right? Yeah, and I prefer to pull scrape turkite. I know you can do both, but I feel like I have a lot more control. And given the ease of material removal, I want to make sure I have good control over the end of this. I hate doing something twice. <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, I feel like I have a lot more control. And, and, and this is sort of the way Richard showed me how to do it from the beginning in terms of turkite scraping. And so I'm sticking with it. It worked real good on the 10 E, and so I'm gonna do it here for you. There we go. We've been yep. kind of taking turns working on this and uh, getting it down. This, this turkite really moves pretty easily as compared to cast iron, but uh, the nice thing is, is that it also holds up, uh, they say comparable to what a, a cast iron uh, way would, would hold up. So it's, it's a nice compromise. A lot of your newer machines, they just go ahead and put the turkite in it from day one. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier to get scraped in. And uh, if it ever wears out, you just peel the old stuff out, put new in and scrape it back in real quick and you're ready to go. We've been through several iterations now of getting everything aligned and checking our bluing on here. And you can kind of see we're actually putting the blue on the ways, on the lays. So the, the main V here as well as the flat in the back and checking our spotting. And we're starting to get good coverage. Uh, it's, it's by no means, I think, where you ultimately want to end up as far as spotting goes. But we're, our alignment is also looking pretty good. And I'm just going to come in here. We're going to be just taking a little bit more out, trying to increase our, our coverage a little bit. Uh, and our alignment is in pretty good shape right now. 
uh, maybe just need to move a little bit. So I'm just going to come in here and again using this uh, draw scraping technique, uh, we're going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of hit the blue spots and uh, take some metal, or take some turkite out rather. So it's just like scraping metal, uh, we're just scraping turkite. It's actually a lot easier and goes a lot faster. I'm going to continue working on some of the other places in here and uh, we'll get her put up over there in a minute. re her and uh, recheck the alignment and it's just rinse and repeat. Keep on doing it over and over until you get it like you want. Alright, let's show you where we ended up here. I'm going to zero this indicator out. This is a tenth indicator so it's reading a ten thousandth of an inch. So this is one thousandths, two thousandths, and those are ten thousandths in between. And again, I'm trying to see, make sure that this is parallel with the saddle running on the ways. And so we're going to pull this back. And you know, we're, we're within three tenths. Okay. It's not perfect. I'm going to tell you, it's nearly impossible to get this thing just absolutely perfect. There's just too many variables at play. We're going to live with three tenths there. So let me get my other indicator now. So now again, we got the square here. So we're measuring the uh, dovetails here to see how they are in relationship to the waves. We want them to be perpendicular. Actually, what we're really after again is we want this end up here to actually be tilting in by somewhere between, I think the book says about seven tenths. I'm going to shoot for between a half a thou and a thou, somewhere in that ballpark. The indicator I have on here is actually a half thousandths indicator. Uh, it's not quite the same resolution we were looking at a minute ago. I want you to know I'm going to, we're going to bump this up against there, go to zero. Let me get it just a little bit, whoops, a little too far. All right, so. I'm going to bump it in now and I want you to notice that as we're moving in this direction, the needle is going to come out this way. So what I want when I sweep this down is for my needle to move out that way between a half a thou and a thou in that ballpark. So let me, uh, I've just got a little dead blow hammer here. We're going to bump this over to zero. And this needle's going to bounce around a little bit. It's picking up the scrape marks in the, the ways here that we have that we're riding on. And we're going to sweep down through here. And you can see it's bouncing right around zero, zero. It's starting to move a little bit toward the positive side here. And when we get down to the end, again, we're somewhere right around that half thou mark. I'm pushing up against it here when I let up. Sometimes it'll bounce back. But I'm happy with this. So we have everything set up just exactly like we want to. Uh, I've looked at my blue marks on the bottom of the ways. I've got good contact. Everything's good. So we're going to call this good. I, I think that this is scraped in exactly where it needs to be. And uh, I think we're good to go. So there we go, guys. Finally, <laughs> we've got this. Uh, this uh, saddle scraped in. It really was not as bad as I thought it would be. Lance came down. He's already headed back home now, uh, but he was a great help for me today. Like I said, he's been through this process before. A lot of this you just kind of have to wrap your mind around, and once you do it the first time, you kind of know how to do it, but getting it figured out that first time can be a little bit challenging. But I'm happy with how we got this. Like I said, I think this is going to work out just great. Uh, just like it is. Thank you, Lance Baltzy, for your help today. Oh, one, one, one quick comment here because I know I'm going to get asked this, com this in the comments because when I've done this before, I've been asked. People are going to say, why are you printing this up here on the front of the ways instead of back here in the back? And the, the logic there, guys, you're thinking, you're thinking real good. Because in theory, and actually in reality, we know that there is more wear in the ways up toward the front than there is back here in the back where the tailstock is at. That's the end that doesn't get used very much. And we have not ground the ways on this lathe. I have inspected them. They're, you know, they're, they're not perfect, but they're, they're pretty darn close. So I think they're going to be fine the way they are. But here's the reason why we did the work up on this end. 
because this is the end we're going to be using it on. Okay, again, this is where probably 90% of the work on this lathe gets done is down here on this end. Uh, if we had freshly ground ways, then yeah, I probably would have done it down there on the end. Or if the ways didn't ha had very little wear in them, you know, yeah, it probably makes sense to do it down there. I had this conversation with Richard King, and Richard's like, look, this is where you're going to be using it. This is where the saddle's going to be running. Get it scraped in down here where it's going to be at most of the time, and uh, you're going to be better off than scraping it in on better ways and bringing it on to worse ways. Just go ahead and scrape it in on the worse ways. And again, better and worse, somewhat relative terms here. They're really not that bad. But uh, again, that's the reason why we're working on this end. So if you were wondering that, my first thought was to do it down on the back end as well, but uh, actually Richard King convinced me that this is where we need to do it. And once he explained why, I think he's right. So with that, that's going to be a wrap on this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're making progress. I'm back on this. I am really wanting to get back on this lathe. I've got a couple little small projects that I need to get knocked out here in the shop, but as soon as that's done, this is really kind of the next thing on the list that I've just got to find the time to sit down and do. And uh, we're going to probably be seeing more videos on this Monarch uh, over the next month or two, trying to get this thing where we're at that point. Thank you for watching as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Uh, comments are always welcome. Uh, emails are always welcome. Uh, just, you know, contact me however you wish. And uh, with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.